Today in the news, Ryzen 7000 gets an unofficial delay, Nvidia and AMD are going to slash prices, and we got a little Zen 4 versus Raptor Lake battle. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. It looks like all is not happening according to their plans. The release date for the Ryzen 7000 CPUs was slated for September 15th, so less than a month from now. And while AMD never fully confirmed that date, some pretty reputable sources got all that info too. Now though, it looks like it's been delayed a little bit. According to a reviewer over on Chip Hell, the official release date would be on September 27th. If this is true, it's one day before Intel's innovation event where they would apparently reveal Raptor Lake. Now, why would there be a delay from AMD? Well, according to the same reviewer, it would be because of some BIOS issues. Boy, BIOS issues? I mean, I really hope that we're not going to have another repeat of the uh, Zen 3 based Ryzen 5000 series. Remember how we had to wait for like five Ajisa iterations until the CPU started to behave as advertised? I mean, it was insane. Anyways, while the new release date is not directly from AMD, it could change too. What is official is the announcement date, and that is August 29th. AMD will have its Together We Advance PCs event. During that event, we'll hear all about the new AM5 platform, and of course, DDR5, PCIe Gen 5, and the Ryzen 7000 series. So tune in at 7 p.m. Eastern time on the 29th. Speaking of PCIe Gen 5 and the next generation, it looks like Corsair is one of the first to show off their next gen SSDs. We all know that PCIe Gen 5 doubles the bandwidth available on Gen 4, and since SSDs pretty much maxed out Gen 4, we're looking at even faster speeds. Well, Corsair just teased their upcoming MP700, that's their SSD, and it can reach sequential writes of up to 9.5 gigabytes per second, and read speeds of up to 10 gigabytes per second. That's pretty impressive. Although I would say to wait a little bit if you were looking to upgrade your storage. For some reason, SSDs evolve really fast and reach the limit of uh, PCIe technology in short amounts of time. So by mid next year, I'm pretty sure that 14 to 16 gigabytes per second drives will be everywhere. Next up, we got Nvidia. And just like I predicted in the last video, it looks like the company is about to pull an RTX 2060. According to two Chinese outlets who uh, have sources in the supply chain, the company is currently working with Ford partners to slash the price of some RTX 3000 series GPUs, similar to what they did with the RTX 2060 back in 2020. And apparently, AMD is also planning on reducing the prices of their RX 6000 series, and Nvidia wants to go even lower than AMD, like they want to be more aggressive. The only issue is, it seems like the price reduction will only happen in the higher end models, like 3080 Ti and up. Hopefully, AMD reduces the price of their mid-tier GPUs so that Nvidia is kind of forced to do so too. Remember, we're not going to see the next generation of mid-tier GPUs until next year and probably something like end of first quarter or second quarter. So if the prices are reduced, they might still be worth it. Then we got Intel in the news because their ARC 8380 is finally making its debuts in the US. According to a Newegg listing, a ASRock Challenger 8380 would release on August 22nd, so in a couple of days. And the price is slightly lower than the $150 that we thought it was. It's going to be $139.99. Now, is it worth it for the price? Well, it all depends on what you plan on doing with your GPU. Are newer encoders something that's essential for you, especially since that one has the AV1 encoding? Are you willing to basically beta test games until uh, Intel fixes their drivers? Or are you just gaming? Because if just gaming is your answer, it's not worth it. I know that Intel is constantly adjusting their drivers, but if we look at barely a month ago with the uh, tech power up review, it barely beats a RX 570. Not just that, but a trusty GTX 1060 with full support for the X12 would be a way better choice and you probably find it for about the same price. But yeah, for a home theater PC, it's probably fine. 
Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's catch-up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Can you do this with your thumbs? I, I can. Anyways, take care.